I'd like to thank you for joining me. I'd like to take this opportunity to share with you information regarding a bill that was recently presented in the Ontario Legislature and has many people and organizations in this province concerned. On November 30th, 2011, the Liberal government introduced Bill 13, known as the Accepting Schools Act. The bill was presented under the pretext of legislation that would tackle the issue of bullying. All of us agree that bullying is a major concern for our children and our schools. A recent study reported that almost one in three students in Ontario say they've been bullied at school. Recent teen suicides have put the issue into the media spotlight and the government is trying to deal with it through legislation. The effort to address bullying is not limited to the Liberal Party. The Ontario PC Party put forth Bill 14, known as the Anti-Bullying Act. So therefore, we actually have two bills in the legislature, both appearing to be designed to reduce bullying in schools. Or are they? Let's first look at Bill 13 a little more closely. The bill begins with very inclusive language, stating that all students should feel safe at school and deserve a positive climate that is inclusive and accepting. But the problem is, the legislation doesn't actually address the needs of all students. The Accepting Schools Act has been widely criticized for favoring certain student groups. The legislation requires schools to establish four types of clubs that promote certain issues. Clubs based on gender equity. Clubs based on anti-racism. Clubs for people with disabilities. And clubs for those who identify with lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgendered issues. These are called gay straight alliance clubs. These are clubs with special interests and privileges. But we have a few questions that have not been answered. Do such clubs actually lead to a more inclusive system? And why are these four issues more important than the multitude of other reasons for students being bullied? Studies show that the most common reason for bullying is physical appearance. People will be bullied for their weight, their height, their hair color, clothing styles, and many other reasons. These are not even considered in this legislation. This causes us to wonder, is this legislation really designed to address the needs of all students? A video that you can find on the Liberal government's website introduces Bill 13, and it clearly demonstrates the intent of the legislation. In the video, Premier McGuinty talks about only one reason for which students are bullied, because they are gay. Even the media has reported concern about this narrow agenda, stating the new law appears to be hijacked by special interest groups who are more concerned about getting gay-straight alliances in schools than they are about dealing with bullying. Bullying for any reason is wrong. And legislation that fails to address bullying for any reason is inadequate legislation. Secondly, Many parents are concerned that this legislation mandates sexual curriculum beginning in kindergarten. Parents have contacted us and they've said they don't want their son or daughter questioning their gender in kindergarten. They don't want them learning about masturbation in grade 5 or about anal and oral sex in grade 7 and 8. Last week, we had a call from a concerned parent. She told us about her 8-year-old son who came home and shared that in school that day, he married his best friend James. When asked how did this happen, the child shared that his grade 3 class discussed the issue of same-sex marriage and part of the lesson involved everyone in class marrying a friend in a mass ceremony. It's true. This is a return to the liberal health curriculum from 2010, which McGinty was praised for removing from the ministry website after the government received so much criticism. The concern with Bill 13 is that once this legislation is passed, however, this is no longer suggested curriculum that can be removed from a website. It is mandated, actually legislated curriculum applicable to both the secular and the Catholic school boards. In addition to the narrow focus 
and the concern about curriculum that conflicts with the values of many families, there is a third concern. Under Bill 13, anyone renting publicly funded school property must follow a yet-to-be-defined provincial code of conduct and ethics. There are hundreds of churches and private religious organizations that rent school space. Will this mean that churches gathering in the public schools will have to yield their doctrine to the yet-to-be-defined provincial code of conduct? That would be a direct violation of the right of religious expression granted under the Federal Charter of Rights and Freedoms. Next question, what are the opposition PCs saying about Bill 13? Is anyone talking about Bill 14? Beyond first reading, there has been no discussion or debate about Bill 14 in the legislature. In fact, PC education critic Elizabeth Whitmer, who presented this bill, made no mention of it when she responded to the second reading of Bill 13. And while she vaguely cautioned against going forward without more public input, she stated that this legislation, Bill 13, needs to be passed as soon as possible. Will the public even get a chance to have a say? Perhaps Alan Hubley, father of Jamie Hubley, the openly gay Ottawa teenager who tragically lost his life last year, put it best when he stated, this is one issue where partisan politics and special interest agendas should not get in the way of the ultimate goal of protecting kids from bullying. He goes on to say, We cannot allow this important piece of legislation to get bogged down with different groups using this as an opportunity to further their own agendas. The focus must remain on protecting all kids as soon as possible. Bullying should be addressed without politicizing classrooms or teaching things to children that are against their parents' will. And good policy should not cater to a special interest group or a narrow political agenda. In summary, if this legislation is left unaltered, it will only address bullying on a selective basis, it will implement a sexual curriculum beginning in kindergarten that is of concern for many parents and will discriminate against children, families, and faith organizations who possess traditional faith values. We truly care about all of our children and how they are being prepared for the future. And I know that you care. So we have made it easy for you to learn more about this legislation and have provided some tools that you can use to make your voice heard on this issue. Please go to www.familycoalitionparty.com and click on the Bill 13 Accepting Schools Act link. There you will find information about Bill 13, updates, resources, and links to your local MPP. It will take only a few minutes, and if we each apply a little time and effort, collectively we can make our voices heard and we can positively impact this issue. Let's work together to get this legislation amended so that it truly addresses all bullying, so that it respects the needs of traditional principled families, and so that it upholds our federally protected rights and freedoms. Thank you for taking your time and effort on this issue.